Hi guys, this is Steve, VU6WZ. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this low noise receive antenna trans impedance amplifier. It does use a very small surface mount op amp, but I'm going to show some tricks on how to mount these tiny guys just using a soldering iron. It's really not that difficult to build up some of these amps yourself. I'll also provide a link so you can order some PCBs. These amps are a unique design and are not available commercially. I use these amps to lift the gain on my short vertical elements in my nine circle phased array and on all of my BOGs, both single wires and phased pairs. Currently, I have 22 of these amps deployed in the field. The original circuit was designed by John W1FV for use in his short vertical high impedance nine circle receive array. This design was to replace his original unity gain op amps. The design is based on a trans impedance topology using an LMH6622 SMD high performance RF op amp. This trans impedance amplifier is looking for a very high source impedance because it amplifies current and converts it to voltage. When used as an amplifier for a short 20 foot vertical in a receiving array, this works well since those short verticals show a very high feed point impedance. However, when used to amplify a BOG with an impedance of about 300 ohms, we need to increase that impedance by inserting a 50 to 60 picofarad series capacitor to add about 1600 ohms of reactance. This series capacitor can be adjusted to a value to achieve the lowest noise performance. More series capacity, more gain. Less series capacity, less gain. Here is the circuit board for a typical short high Z vertical like I use in my 9 circle array. Notice it is powered by 12 volts on the RG6 feed line. Here is the circuit board for the BOG amplifiers. Notice this design is powered by a separate 12 volt supply line. I've done this because over the years I've had issues with noise developing on these amps over time that could be related to micro arcing or other rectification issues associated with that 12 volts on the coax. Here are some older high Z amps that developed corrosion at the F connectors. It seems any small amount of moisture coupled with dirt could lead to some unwanted conduction and corrosion and eventually, you know, rectification trouble. This is why cleaning the PCBs, using conformal coating, and keeping those F connectors tight is important. From now on, I'm going to be talking about the construction and assembly of these BOG amps, but really there's little difference from the short vertical design. I've designed the boards in KiCad and have exported a Gerber file for each board and include a link at the bottom of this video so you can download and save it to your PC. Look, as much as I don't want to support China, JLC PCB has produced good quality boards for me very affordably. You can upload your Gerber file that you downloaded and then make any other selections. I selected purple. I don't know why, I just like it better than the green. Maybe order red. You save it to the cart, check out and pick your shipping method. The first thing to do is to mount these little SMD op amps. If you do a large number like I do, you might want to watch my video about using a $60 electric frying pan to reflow the devices. You could also use a heat gun or even a toaster oven. However, you can get these little guys on the board just using a soldering iron. First of all, use flux. Don't even try it without. I use a toothpick and dab it on the pads. I use a pair of tweezers to place the device on the board. Watch for the pinout dot in the one corner and place it correctly on the board. That's pin one. I hold it down with one finger, load my small tip iron with some solder, use this fine solder, then just touch one pin to hold it in place. Then I just carefully flow solder on the rest of the pins. By the way, get some of these. They're a great help. Or use a magnifier light. I use a similar procedure for the little Murata SMD chokes, except they're even bigger and easier. I can usually place them just using my fingers. 
The next step is to populate the rest of the board with the through hole components. I leave the relay to second last. Then the F connector is the very last install. Notice the white box I put on the silk screen on the underside. You want to mount the board on the box lid with the components facing out. So make sure the F connector is soldered on like this. I find some objects to hold the board up so it sits square on the F connector, then solder it on. Before we mount the board in the box, we must clean it thoroughly. We want to get all that flux off the board and then coat it with a conformal coating. I use this flux remover. First, I spray the board and use an old toothbrush to help free up the flux. I give it another spray and then I rinse it in the sink with hot water. Believe it or not, you could also put them in your dishwasher on the cutlery rack if you wanted to experiment with that. Set them aside and let them dry. Next, I mount the number 8 stainless steel 1 inch screws. They protrude the same direction as the F connector. Use a small split lock washer under the nut. This is important since it will prevent any chance of shorting the nut to ground on the board. Use a 11 32nd deep socket to tighten the nuts. I use this paint on acrylic coating. I find it's easier to apply than the spray stuff. I apply it liberally to both sides of the board. Be aware if subsequent repair is required you will need to remove this stuff. You can buy this coating remover. I have this pen that works to remove the coating from specific components if needed. Uh, yes, actually I did have to replace one of the op amps that got vaporized by a nearby lightning strike. Next, we're going to mount the board into these little Hammond 1591 LSBK boxes. We mount the amp on the lid of the box. We use a blank PCB as a template, but be very careful to place the board facing the right way. This is a good point to stop and think about it. Measure twice, drill once, as the saying goes. I use a silver sharpie marker to mark out the holes. I have a drill press, but you could probably drill these out with a hand drill. These step bits are a must have for building things. Make sure you get one with deep enough steps to penetrate the plastic. Drill out the coax connector and screw it. If you did everything right, the board should easily mount onto the lid of the box. Add nuts to each screw and carefully adjust them so the board is level with the lid. I often use a flat washer and then another split washer under the nut to attach them to the lid. I have occasionally omitted those washers too. I fix the F connector nut and add another nut to each screw. 
I use that same silver marker to label the box. Drill a couple of small holes in the bottom to allow any moisture buildup from condensation to drain out. I'll also apply a strip of black electrical tape around the top and side joints, ready to go in the field. However, if you want to test it, let me show you what I do. I use my mini VNA. I've never got on to using that tiny little screen on the device, so I use the NanoSaver program on my laptop. Make sure you do a complete through calibration with the test leads you plan to use. I built this clip lead attachment onto an F connector. There's a slightly different setup depending on which amp you're testing, either the BOG amp or the short vertical one. First, for the BOG amp, it's pretty simple. Channel 0, S11, into the antenna. Channel 1 to the output, F connector. Power it up and sweep. For the short vertical amp, you must insert a 40 to 50 picofarad capacitor in series with the antenna input. The BOG amps already have this, so you don't need it. Also, you need to fashion a bias T, like this. It's just an RF choke and a blocking cap onto the F connector, and I use clip leads for the output. I sweep from 500 kilohertz to 10 megahertz. I plot S21 gain and phase. You should see around 10 to 11 dB of gain. The S21 phase does change with frequency. If you use these amps for other antennas, be aware that the amp must see a very high source impedance, somewhere between 1600 and 2000 ohms. If you just hook it up to a low impedance antenna, it's going to puke out mostly noise and junk. However, you can experiment with inserting a series capacitor to bring the input impedance up, just like I've done with the BOG amps. There is a link to the BOM below this video. Mauser and DigiKey should have all the parts available. The BOM parts count that I show are for 10 units. If you build one of these, please review the schematic carefully and review your own parts order. Here is how I mount them. I use a black zip tie. Make sure you flood the F connector with silicon grease to prevent moisture ingress. If you want to use one of these BOL amp designs for use in a short high Z vertical array so that you can avoid the 12 volts bias T on the coax, then delete the input capacitor C8 and run a jumper there. Also, I would recommend adding an RF choke or a 1 mega ohm resistor from J2, the antenna input, to ground to drain any wind static from the vertical. Wind static obviously isn't a problem with a grounded wire lying on the ground. If you plan to build the short vertical amp to be used as a direct drop-in replacement on your existing array, please notice on the PCB it has a place for C6, a small trimmer cap. John included this as a fine-tune gain adjustment. However, I've chosen to omit this trimmer in all of my 9-circle amps. Without it, all of the amps tested within 1 dB of gain between the units. If you still want to include it, I'll put the part number in the description below this video. You'll notice this trimmer has not been included on the BOG amp boards. We all owe John W1FV great thanks for his excellent engineering design work on both the original 9 circle RX array and now for sharing this new amplifier design. I've already said it, but this is a unique design. To my knowledge, I'm not aware of a trans impedance topology RF amp like this being deployed on HF. For three years, I've been using these amps in my 9 circle array, and they're excellent performers. There's no need at all for a preamp before the rig. The slight modifications to get them to work with my BOGs has also surprised me. They're remarkably quiet and they're perfect for use in my phased arrays because they stabilize the output impedance to exactly 75 ohms no matter what's happening on the BOG wire. I've even tamed one of these amps for use in a short 15 foot long dipole that sits on top of my tower and is now my main broadband amp feeding the 9-band skimmer used for 160 meters through 10 meters. Maybe build a few of these amps and experiment with them. 
73, this is Steve, V6WZ.